Welcome to everyone. So today I am going to talk about uh, radiology and its various imaging modalities. So what are all the various imaging modalities in radiology department? So I am Dr. Srinivasan, Associate Professor, working in radiology department, SLIMS, Slims Hospital and SLIMS affiliated to by her university. So let us see what are all the various imaging modalities in the radiology department. So this is very useful for beginners and all interns. So since radiology is a specialized subject, you should know what are all the various investigations we are doing and what are all the various modalities, what are the basics for those modalities and what are all the pathologies we can identify by each types of investigations. So this PPT will give you the information about all these things. Okay, let us see. What are all the modalities available in radiology department? So first, when you are walking in the corridor of radiology department, you will see the name boards here and there hanging. And the hanging name boards tells about what is the type of instrument available and what are all the cases you can refer. So first you will see the X-ray. So X-ray will have 300 MA X-ray, 500 MA, 600 MA, 800 MA, IATV, fluoroscopy, then low X-ray dose, mammography. So we have X-ray, mammography, and fluoroscopy. So all these things use ionizing X-ray radiations. So basically these are all ionizing uh, the instruments using ionizing radiations. Next one is ultrasound. As the name indicates, ultrasound means we are using the high frequency ultrasonic waves uh, by specialized crystals and that produces reflects and that we are seeing as B echoes and producing image. Then we have CT. CT is nothing but computed tomography. Computed tomography is again the same X-ray technique where we can see two-dimensional X-rays, but in CT, we can see uh, three-dimensional, two-dimensional, see, um, and whatever the structures, volume reconstructed, everything we can see. But CT also we are using same ionizing radiations. Then we have MRI. MRI is nothing but magnetic resonance imaging. So here we use, um, I will talk about the physics of MRI later. Then we have another, now it is separate department, nuclear medicine, PET CT, SPECT, everything comes under the nuclear medicine. Then cath lab, that is angiographic techniques. So all these are all the various modalities which is available in the radiology department. Let us see one by one, what is the basic um, uh, basis of each investigation, what are all the pathologies we can commonly see in these investigations, which investigation is specific for what type of pathology, all these things we'll see in the coming slides. So first we'll go for the conventional x-rays. What are x-rays? As I described, x-rays are nothing but it's a part of the electromagnetic spectrum. So like visible light, gamma rays and cosmic radiation, X-ray are a particular group of radiation which can pass through the human body and it can produce image in the film, so which is helpful for the diagnostic purpose. So how X-rays are helpful? So our human body is made up of different types of tissues. We have bones, muscles, fat tissue, skin. These tissues will have different types of absorption. So based on these absorption, we are getting the images. So when X-rays are getting more absorbed in case of bone, you appear, you can see X-rays appearing white. When the tissue in between absorbing intermediate, moderate type of absorption of X-ray, then you can see intermediate type of color. When like air structure, which is totally absorbing the uh, X-rays, so it will appear dark. So where X-rays we are using, so most of the chest pathologies, 
we can identify by preliminary X-ray film. Most of the bone pathologies, we can like tumor, trauma. So X-ray is a preliminary first line of investigation, which helps us in making the diagnosis. Abdomen, since it has a lot of gas-filled structures, it is not of that much use because gas-filled structures absorbs the X-ray and only it can produce the gas. So it is limited usefulness in case of intestinal obstruction, large bowel, small bowel obstruction, paralytic alias, only limited usefulness is there. But immensely we are using the X-rays in case of chest pathologies and musculoskeletal pathologies. So X-rays are essential first line of investigation in chest and musculoskeletal pathologies. So let us see few of the X-ray films. And can you identify any pathologies in these X-ray films? First, you tell what are the types of parts we have captured in these X-ray films. And uh, also tell the pathologies. Yeah, first is chest X-ray PAV. You can see some well-defined smooth marginated opacity seen in right upper and mid zone. So this is a well differentiated lung mass. So this is how you can see the normal lung here. So this is a normal lung and here you are seeing a well defined smooth marginated opacity. So this is mass lesion and we have to, thus we can identify the mass lesion. And here you can see the normal bone. See this is a normal bone which is appearing dense white and you can see the intermediate muscle structure appearing and you can see the fat which is appearing slightly radial center. So whenever the margin, see here you can see the protrusion of the bone which is away from the joint. So this is a pathology, benign tumor of the bone. This is called osteochondroma. And you can see here that is, uh, this is pedunculated osteosarcoma, osteochondroma and sorry, osteochondroma. Here, this is sessile osteochondroma. And this is pathology of traumatology, how X-ray is useful in trauma. So you see the X-ray, we can take an AP view, then in the lateral film, so that you can see the fracture line, the um, discontinuity of the bone, and how it is displaced. Here in um, uh, AP film, you can see it is displaced laterally. Here you can see this is also displaced posteriorly. So there is a fracture involving the distal aspect of the femur, which shows posterior displacement and lateral displacement of the proximal fracture fragment. This is how X-rays are very useful in identifying and it has immense use in chest pathologies and MSK pathologies. So what are the advantages and disadvantages? So as I told, X-rays are ionizing radiation, it can produce stochastic and non-stochastic effects in the human body and it requires patient cooperation. And it is advantageous if you take, it is the first line of investigation, highly in inexpensive, cheap, everywhere it is available. It doesn't require any advanced technical aspects, technologies to operate. So it can be performed easily and it is portable even you can, in case of trauma patients, we can bring the X-ray, portable X-rays towards the patient side and we can take the X-ray. So next we will go to the mammography. So mammography is a specialized form of X-ray equipment which is designed to see the breast pathologies. So because since my breast is a soft tissue structure, we cannot use higher KVP, higher MAS patients. <clears throat> we can use only lower KVP and lower MAS patients. So mammography, we are using only TAT KVP machine. And uh, this mammography is used as a initial screening tool in identifying the breast asymmetry, breast mass, and very importantly, microcalcifications. So this is a mammography equipment. 
So you can see the anode here. The anode is maybe made up of either molybdenum or lodium. And the filter used here is molybdenum or lodium. And you can see the breast tissue here. And whenever the X-rays are passed through this, formed by this anode and passed through this breast structure, and it can produce image in the receptor, imaging plate kept in the receptor. So this is a mammogram machine. So this is a breast paddle. So they will keep the breast here and they take two views. One is craniocardial view and another one is mediolateral oblique view. So this paddle will compress the breast. And uh, so this craniocardial view will be taken in the same position. And for MLO wave, it will rotate 30 degree and the exposure will be done. So like all ionizing radiations, this is also low-dose radiation and um, it is mainly useful in detecting the microcalcification. So this is an image obtained by the mammography machine. So if you see the mammography breast, you can see the dense asymmetry of the breast, dense breast here, and you can see the mass here. So it is, you can identify the mass which is present within the breast tissue and the asymmetry of the breast tissue also can be identified. So next we are going to fluoroscopy. So fluoroscopy. So what is fluoroscopy? Fluoroscopy is like cine X-ray. Okay, now let us discuss about fluoroscopy. As I told you earlier, fluoroscopy is like a cine X-ray. So what are the advantages of fluoroscopy? So fluoroscopy is the same technique which uses like X-rays, it uses the same technique. It is more like real-time imaging. It utilizes image intensifier and involves the use of contrast agents. What are the main uses of fluoroscopy? So what are all the pathologies it will come under the, we can easily see in the fluoroscopy. As I told you, no, X-rays as a um, gastrointestinal system, most of the system, most of the organs have hollow viscous structures. It is difficult for X-rays to identify the pathology. So, but in fluoroscopy, we can give contrast agents, ask the patients to take contrast agent, and we can identify the various pathologies using the contrast agents. So for, it is very useful in gastrointestinal imaging, genitourinal imaging, angiography. Again, it is a hollow viscous structure. You can inject the contrast to the blood vessels and identify where is embolization, AV fistula, whatever abnormalities are there. So it can also be used in case of foreign body removal and musculoskeletal cases for bone reduction, for fracture reduction, for the most of the things, fluoroscopy is very useful. It is more like, uh, so whatever mobile you have photo, that is like X-ray and your video mode is like fluoroscopy. So what are the advantages of fluoroscopy and disadvantages of fluoroscopy? So the advantages is why are widely, this, this is also again widely ex available, inexpensive, and you can identify both the, and not only the anatomical problem, functional problem also. Since we are using like video mode, you can identify the functional problem also. And you need not to give any special sedation for doing this procedure. The disadvantages are, since it is more like cine X-ray, more amount of X-ray exposure will be there. So patient, uh, we need a lot of patient cooperation. We need ingestion or injection of the contrast. And it is time consuming. Let us see one by one, what are all the different fluoroscopy procedures we do? What are the names we are given for those procedures? The first one is esophagogram or barium swallow. As the name indicates, it is the study of the esophagus. Esophagus is the muscular tube which forms the, which, which is the, transmits the food from the muscle to the stomach. Then we have upper GI series. Then we have small bowel series. The small bowel series can be done either passively or actively, actively by putting the tube like Bilbo Daughter's tube and injecting the contrast 
that is called small bowel enema or enterocolitis. Then we have contrast enema procedures, that is large bowel study. So we have two types of contrast. So we can either use single contrast or double contrast. Single contrast studies, we use only single contrast agent like barium. So when you are mixing the, along with barium, some other contrast materials like air or cellulose, then we call it as double contrast study. So either we can use single contrast study or for better visualization of the pathology, we can use double contrast study also. So you can see I'm giving example how the single contrast study will film will be there and double contrast film will be there. So this is single contrast film. You can see the barium alone is injected through the anus and you can see the barium filled by the filled within the large bowel and you can see the descending colon, spinning flexure, transverse colon and ascending colon. So here you can see the double contrast. So along with barium, the air is also insufflated and then you can see um, the difference like the air and contrast and you can easily identify the multiple diverticulosis which is present here. So the air along with the barium, you can see the better visualization of mucosal pathologies like diverticulosis. This is classical centipede sign which is commonly seen in diverticulosis. Okay, what are the contrast materials we are using? As I told, we are using barium sulfate and gastrography. So these two are oral contrast agents we are using. So barium sulfate can be used as a thick paste or thin paste or directly as a paste. And gastrography can be used with full strength or diluted in your water for a one liter of water and we can ask the patient to take for a half within half an hour then we can do the study also. So this is water soluble contrast, which helps mainly in identifying the subacute intestinal obstruction or in post-operative cases where there is a leak to identify, like barium is toxic to peritoneum. So we cannot use barium in, <coughs> in identifying the anastomotic leak, but gastrocraphin can be used in identifying the anastomotic leak. So how it will be seen in the film? So first you see the barium will appear uh, very bright and you can easily identify, but gastrographin is slightly opaque and you can um, identify in fluoroscopy. So barium is little uh, bri brightly opaque and gastrographin is slightly opaque, more water soluble. It's like more water in consistency. So barium is the most widely used contrast agent and it produces better resolution than gastrographin, but it has chalky taste. So nowadays, so many flavors has come, barium is coming in strawberry flavor. So we can use that with flavors and we can give it to the patient and we can find it out. So what are all the mucosal pathologies and abnormal uh, transit or uh, times any obstruction in the uh, hollow viscous like uh, from uh, from top to bottom like uh, all bowels like esophagus small bowel large bowel everything we can find it out gastrographin gastrographin as i told you this water soluble contrast little foul taste but it is also coming in flavor but it has it is more like water it has poor mucosal coating see barium is like paste chalky paste and it has good very good mucosal coating we can easily identify mucosal pathologies but gastrographin is not like that mainly gastrographin is used to identify hollow viscous perforation anastomotic leak because it is not harmful to peritoneum it won't produce any peritonitis So let us one by one see what we are going to see in barium swallow, what that study says. So barium swallow is the study mainly we are uh, doing to see the uh, evaluation of pharynx and esophagus. So up to the, like we see mainly pharynx, then esophagus up to distal gastroesophageal junction. It may be done as a single contrast or double contrast study. So how will you do the study? We will ask the patient to come in 
uh, fasting at least for six hours so that the barium will coat the mucosa nicely. We can identify the mucosal pathology. So we'll ask the patient to stand and we'll give the barium, ask him to drink. Then while drinking, while swallowing, we will expose and we will identify how the barium is going through the esophagus, whether there is any interest, whether there is any mass or obstruction or intraluminal or extraluminal compression. Everything we can identify as the barium passes through the esophageal tube. So what is upper GA exam series? The upper GA exam series also involves the study of stomach and duodenum. So here also we can use either double contest or single contest. So it can be combined with small bowel series and it largely replaces endoscopy and cross-sectional imaging. But it is less insensitive when compared to endoscopy and cross-sectional imaging. What do you mean by small bowel series? Small bowel series is called barium meal series. So we'll ask the patient to drink barium. So then we will see how the barium is traveling through the esophagus, entering the stomach, and uh, with the transit time, how it goes to small bowel, then how it reaches the uh, large bowel. So like that, it takes time. But anyhow, we can see the transit time, the mucosal contour, and the bowel loop distribution. Everything can be easily evaluated in small bowel series. So this is, we are asking the patient to drink and take. So in case of enteroplasis, it is different. We'll discuss that. See the small bowel series film, it will be like this something. You can see nicely the stomach here and uh, jejunum, uh, duodenum, then jejunum. See the feathery appearance of jejunum. So these are all valvulae conventis. And these are all characterless loop of Wagenstein, like see the characters loop of helium, so here. So you can nicely see the small bowel mucosal pattern here in the barium meal series. The next one is small bowel enteroplasis. What do you mean by small bowel enteroplasis? So otherwise called barium small bowel enema. So we will give the uh, barium along with that we will uh, mix the methyl cellulose and uh, we will put the Bilbo daughter's tube, which is a little bit more lengthier than the Lyle's tube. So we'll put through the nose or mouth, and uh, that will, uh, like, uh, we'll uh, rotate the patient and we'll make the tip of the tube in the jejunal flexure, uh, just at the level of teeth's ligament. So we'll inject the contrast and we will identify the small bowel structures, um, like, um, distend it with the barium and methyl cellulose and we will uh, make the small bowel structures opacified with these contrast and thus how it helps in identifying the pathology. So here, same thing, we are using uh, either barium or gastrograph in contrast. So what are the uh, difference in barium contrast and double, uh, this thing, gastrograph in contrast. Then we will go to the genitourinary study. So as we are telling genitourinary study, it involves kidney, ureter, bladder, and genital system, like mainly uterus. To see the patency of the fallopian tubes, we do hysterosalpingogram. To see any urethral obstruction or urethral stricture, we do retrograde urethrogram. And to see the bladder and how the bladder functions, the dynamics of the bladder can be seen in voiding cystoerythrogram and cystogram to see study about only the bladder and whether there are any contour abnormalities are there, what type of bladder is there, it is a flaccid bladder or hypertrophic bladder. So all these things we can study using these procedures. So what do you mean by cystogram? Cystogram is nothing but we will inject uh, contrast through the Foley's tube or any catheter and we will distend the bladder with the contrast agent and look for any filling defects or any obstruction. How, what about the bladder, to look for many intraluminal path, bladder pathologies. See, this is a patient followed by trauma. So you can see the doom of the bladder. You can see the rupture of doom of the bladder. And you can see there is contrast extravasation into the 
intraperitoneal structures. So this is extraperitoneal. This is not extra intraperitoneal rupture of the bladder. So cystogram is helps. This is a Foley's bulb here, and by injecting the contrast into the bladder, you can see the bladder, uh, the contrast in uh, intravasated into uh, the extravasated into the peritoneum. So thus, how it helps in identifying the intraperitoneal rupture of the bladder. Then voiding cystoerythrogram. So what about voiding cystoerythrogram? So we will ask the patient, we will inject the contrast and mainly it is useful in identifying the posterior urethral wall. So we will inject the contrast through the catheter and we will ask the baby to void and we easily identify any filling defect at the posterior urethra. That, that's how we identify the this uh, posterior urethral wall. This is still golden modality to identify the posterior urethral wall. So what about retrograde urethrogram? So retrograde urethrogram is mainly, so we are injecting the contrast by the catheter again into the anterior urethra and we will see any urethral stricture or urethral rupture or infection, everything. So how the image, how the film will look like, like this. So we'll inject the contrast, this is a feeding tube and we'll inject the contrast through the feeding tube and the contrast is opacifying the urethra and after opacifying the urethra, it has entered the bladder. So any pathologies in the urethra, prostatic urethra, posterior urethra, bladder, we can identify in the retrograde urethrogram. So what do you mean by hysterosalpingogram? So hysterosalpingogram, hystero means uterus, salphings means tube. So to identify the pathology in fallopian tubes, for example, patency of the fallopian tubes, any occlusion in the fallopian tubes may result in infertility. So to identify that, so we are doing hysterosalpingogram. So the dye is injected into the cervical canal under fluoroscopy guidance. And um, uh, we can see the, whether the dye, injected dye is coming through both the fallopian tubes and uh, whether we are able to identify any occlusion. So if any occlusion is there, then we can see the patency of the tube is not there, obstruction. So you can go for surgery. So this is how helpful in identifying the patency of the fallopian tubes. Then we will go to the next modality. So, so far, uh, I'll summarize. So, so far we have seen the various modalities topic. We have seen about x-rays. Then we have discussed about uh, mammogram. Then we have discussed about uh, fluoroscopy. In fluoroscopy, uh, what are all the different names? How we are identifying pathologies in gastrointestinal system and then genital urinary system and how the, we are able to uh, identify the patency of the fallopian tubes. So everything we can easily understand by uh, using, uh, like if you know what are all the common pathologies and what investigation we have to do, everything can be easily understood by this. So next we are going to the next modality that is ultrasound. Okay, next we will see the, the other modality. So, which is non-ionizing modality, that is ultrasound. As the name indicates, ultrasound is um, um, like we are using non-ionizing sound waves. So, these sound waves, when we are using in high frequencies, so it will go and hit the internal structures and produces the B wave. So how it produces? So we are using on probe. So this is the probe material. So this probe material is like both acts like a speaker and microphone. So it emits short wave that is ultra hertz level that sound base and that will go and hit the internal structures and that becomes like a echoes and that it observes the echoes also and produces image. So it is more like speaker and it is more like receiver. So it produces the sound waves and by the specialized crystal, that is piezoelectric effect they call, the specialized crystal is red zirconate titanate and that crystal will vibrate, electrical impulses will go and make the crystal to vibrate and the vibrated crystal will produce sound waves. These sound waves will go 
and hit the internal organs and the reflected echoes so comes and produces images so these images we call ultrasound images so this is a <coughs> this is the basis for piezoelectric principle so the voltage generator when certain materials are deformed by pressure so this is called piezoelectric and this voltage we are applying by electrical impulses and the change in dimension will produce the uh, results in uh, sound waves production and these sound waves will go and hit the internal organs and that it's coming again as internal echoes so what are all the uses of ultrasound so since it is a non ionizing radiation it is very much useful in those conditions where ionizing radiation is strictly contraindicated like uh, obstetric sonography while in pregnancy we cannot use ionizing radiations because ionizing radiations will affect the fetal embryogenesis and results in harmful effects or teratogenic effects that can be prevented by sonography so ultrasonography is widely used in all obstetric pathologies this is the only modality of choice we can use mri but this is the common and this is the first line modality of choice which is useful in all obstetric obstetric pathologies then we can use to uh, see the all abdominal organs tendons muscles thyroid for most of the things ultrasonography is very useful so this is uh, uses of ultrasonography in obstetrics so we can uh, identify the date of the pregnancy confirm the fetal viability then you can determine the location of the fetus whether it is intrauterine or ectopic ectopic in fallopian tube or else so ectopic gestation is an emergency condition and that can be easily detected by ultrasonography thus it is life saving and we can check the location of the placenta and see the condition of the cervix you have to see the number of fetuses whether it is single fetuses or multiple fetuses and you can assess the fetal growth so whether the fetal is growing in proper or that is iugr everything fetal movement heartbeat biophysical profile everything obstetric ultrasound is having immense value in and life saving in obstetrics so these are all the few images so you can see uh, this is um, a nuclear translucency you can see the um, uh, fetus seen within the uterine cavity you can see the head of the fetus you can see the spine see the nuclear translucency and see the limb buds so all these things you can beautifully see in the ultrasound so you can see the doppler doppler means velocity how much blood is flowing towards the fetus or away from the fetus with what resistance everything can be detected in ultra obstetric doppler an obstetric doppler see uh, is very useful in identifying the iugr and it's helpful life saving in so many conditions then you can see the uh, fetus location see this is intrauterine yolk sac and number of gestations whether it is single uterine tight gestation or multiple everything can be identified in ultrasound so and in case of anesthesia department previously they used to do blind injection procedures now it is of immense use in pain clinic and uh, it is very useful in uh, um, putting the needle exactly in the ganglion block exactly in that place and injecting so we can lively see how um, uh, how much uh, anesthetic agent they are injecting how much block everything so it is now very useful in obstetric department anesthesia department and emergency medicine so what is fast can anyone tell what is fast fast is nothing but focused assessment with sonography for trauma so this is uh, like uh, when our patient is coming with collapse we can easily um, by using ultrasound see the extra uh, fluid loss that is uh, the extravasation of the fluid for example pericardial effusion or hemoperitoneum or pericardial tamponade pleural effusion everything can be assessed in fast exam so thus it is very helpful in emergency medicine and for all abdominal procedure abdominal uh, organs so liver 
the best modality of choice is um, um, ultrasound for all pancreatic pathologies, uh, bile duct pathology, kidney, stones, appendix, so many things. All most of the intra-abdominal pathologies we can easily identify by the ultrasound. And for neurology, again, carotid ultrasonography, look for any carotid plague formation, uh, any stenosis, uh, significant stenosis is there. All these things, which is which is end up in stroke, that can be prevented by seeing carotid ultrasound. Again, for ophthalmology, so for B scan, any uh, because posterior chamber we cannot see in A scan. So that can be seen by using ultrasound. So any vitreous hemorrhage, retinal detachment, everything can be seen in the B scan. Then uh, we'll go to the other modality that is computed tomography. As I told you, computed tomography is similar to the X-ray technology only. So it uses the same ionizing radiation, but we can see in 2D, 3D uh, structure of pathologies. So um, this is a computer tomography machine, and you can see this aperture, and this is a, where patient will lie. So X-ray will be there, and other side, uh, X-ray tube will be there, the other side, uh, receptor will be there, and X-ray will rotate surrounding the patient, and it will produce three-dimensional and two-dimensional images. So this is a cross-sectional imaging technique, and we can see whatever pathologies you want to see, similar to X-rays, and this is discovered by Hounsfeld. So we are putting Hounsfeld units, again, based on the attenuation difference of the tissue, so uh, we are giving numbers for that. So when it is going in minus, it just indicates mostly fat. And zero is the neutral, which indicates water. And uh, blood is 60 to 70. And bone, it is more uh, in thousands. CT, we are using contrast agents, especially ionated contrast agents and non ionated contrast agents. Then again, entry coated like barium, and CT contrast, everything the same like X-ray, we are using contrast agents in CT also. So these are all the contrast agents. I told you, you know, this is a strawberry flavor, barium available. And these are all intravascular contrast agents. This is um, like Omnipake. We can use ionated contrast agents to make the uh, structures visible, to make the pathologies more prominent, to assess the vascularity of the pathology. We can use these ionated contrast agents. So this is barium CT oral contrast. We can identify and we can identify all the pathologies within the uh, hollow viscous and it is very helpful. So as I told you, CT has immense applications, especially with the, the brain is within the strong structure, calvarium. So sound waves cannot pass, X-rays cannot pass, but CT, we can identify whatever bleed it is intracranial, any form of intracranial bleed, the first line of investigation of choice is CT scan, and we can identify even um, uh, hemorrhagic stroke and whatever degenerative diseases, everything can be identified at the CT scan. And head and neck imaging, PNS, everything, so we can identify the mucosal thickening, sinusitis can be easily identified. So that I told you, you know that it is intracranial bleed is a uh, very important uh, life-saving thing which can be easily directed by CT. So these are all various forms of intracranial bleed. Here you can see this is subdural bleed. That means uh, there is blood collection between the uh, bone and the outer dural layer. And you can see here again subdural bleed which is causing midline shift. See the midline shift of these structures. And this is intraparangamal bleed. And the intraparangamal bleed entered into the ventriculum and producing intraventricular extension of the intraparangamal bleed. So as I told you, CT has wide range of applications and it is useful in body imaging and uh, lung HRCT thorax in COVID time. HRCT thorax is the primary modality of imaging and we are using everywhere and it is a modality of choice for most of the abdominal all over the body this is a msk system everything ct has its wide range of applications 
and in case of acute abdomen and in case of trauma then angiographies see the 3d reconstruction of the uh, ct you can easily identify coronary pathology also see the ct cardiac imaging and you can identify the different uh, uh, coronary pathologies and you can see identify the this is a renal angiogram you can identify any abnormal uh, aberrant vessels any av malformation and how much um, uh, any abnormal vascular pathology so this is a power of the ct uh, scan we can um, reconstruct and uh, we can easily um, see the clear cut anatomy and abnormal pathologies then we are going to the next important modality that is magnetic resonance imaging so what about magnetic resonance imaging see like uh, uh, earth uh, the human body is also made up of um, uh, 70% water and 30% bone uh, and rest of other tissue structures these water molecules acts like a tiny magnets when the patient is put under the large bore magnet so these tiny magnets will spin along the magnetic field and it produces images these images is captured and by fourier transformation is converted into the image so it has better image contrast than the ct scan so we are using a tesla from 0.3 tesla up to 3 tesla mri scanners are available so imagine one tesla is equal to uh, 10000 gas the earth magnetic field if you see it is 0.6 gas only see how much magnetic field will be produced produced by the machine so whatever patients with implants they are strictly contraindicated and nobody should go with metallic substances into the mri scanner room so the mri scanner is kept under the strict uh, protective field and uh, so that nobody with uh, metallic substances should enter the field so mri we use special contrast agents like gadolinium so this gadolinium is a paramagnetic substance and that will evaluate the unlike uh, ct contrast where there is increased vascularity contrast will be more but in case of mri wherever there is breach in blood brain barrier contrast will be more and more enhancement will be there so again mr has because of superior contrast resolution and uh, better imaging appearances it is so similar to pathology it will produce imaging appearances so similar to pathological slides what it produces so it is more like max so you can identify the fat um, and tissue and uh, the uh, um, like specialized techniques like mr spectroscopy even you can analyze what are the chemicals available within the pathology so this is a image which is produced by mri you can see clearly the tissue contrast tissue contrast is better in mri you can see the sulcal spaces clearly corpus callosum here clearly so all the structures we can see more clearly with better tissue contrast in different planes in mri so mri has wide range of applications almost all organs can be imaged in mri so it is highly immense useful in msk so you can see the cartilage structures tear meniscus and marrow any marrow abnormal signal intensity can be easily identified by mri so what about the other innovative imaging modalities so we have other innovative imaging modalities uh, like uh, cath lab procedures so these cath lab procedures not only for diagnostic purpose and also for therapeutic purpose so here uh, we do uh, access by um, um, femoral sheath catheter wherever there is occlusion aneurysm av malformation everything can be rectified by accessing through the femoral sheath catheter and we can go to that place and do embolization coiling and uh, um, a lot of life saving procedures can be done by using cath lab techniques so we have two types of cath lab one is uh, uniplanar and another one is multiplanar all these cath labs techniques exclusively used for vascular pathologies 
then these vascular pathologies nowadays easily uh, diagnosed by these cath lab machines and we can do all sorts of therapeutic procedures also using this cath lab machines so to summarize so we have seen what are all lot of various modalities whatever available in the radiology department starting from the x ray then mammography then fluoroscopy so where and what pathologies it is more useful how it produces images then we have come to non ionizing radiation that is ultrasound then we have seen more about ct then mri so then more specifically about cath lab procedures so this is the basic fundamental thing you should know what are all the modalities available in our department and for what purposes we can use the specific modality which helps in management thank you